In this one, part two of the service, the annual service of the 90% plus of, uh, efficient furnace, I'm going to concentrate on burners, ignition, uh, and so on. This furnace comes with this plate covering it. Okay, that means if you look a little higher here, you got combustion air coming in here. Now that combustion air, if it's a good install, is taken outside. Some of them just uh, terminate it inside the house. I don't think that's a great idea, but that's not for here. Uh, so the air that comes in here is actually really clean because it's coming from outside. Outside air is cleaner than inside air. So these burners don't get all that dirty, usually. They can, but it is a little unusual. You should, however, do a little something with these burners anytime you do a service. Now one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tree, yeah, here we go. I'm going to take a tree brush like this, and I'm just going to run it down in here, and I'm going to run it all the way through. I'll take it on the bottom too, and get it all the way through the burner. You're going to do that with each one of these things, top and bottom. It's sometimes kind of hard to get it through there. Uh, now, if these burners are really dirty, I'm not saying you should do this. Uh, if, there, if you notice a lot of dust on the uh, Venturis here, these are the Venturis right there, uh, you might want to pull those burners out and just clean them. It looks like there's minimal dirt on them and you can look inside and you can see then that will be sufficient. Now the next thing, I want this thing, I want to look at this hot surface igniter. Now this one uses a silicon nitride igniter, which didn't seem to have as much trouble as uh, uh, some of the earlier ones. But the silicon carbide ones did have some problems. Uh, these fail, but they, they're not as, uh, not as common. So let's pull that thing out and take a look at it. Now I pulled it out, and I've got it right there. Let's get a little closer to that. Now I try to keep this away from anything because it gets really freaking hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing. The burners will actually not light because this thing's out of there, but that's okay. Now you can see it getting warm and it's pretty even throughout. So I don't think there's any problem with this one here. Okay, here I've kind of set this up. And I've got the ohm probes on it. You can see the hot surface igniter on the top there. I just kind of hung it there with the probes in it. And we're showing 14.9 ohms. Well, what does that mean? So I'm going to show you a fact sheet that gives the different resistance settings for uh, each type of igniter. Now this one has a little tag on it. If you look close, you can see this little tag right there. And that gives you, let me get closer to that. Now if you look close on that thing, you can see the White Rogers logo right there. And underneath it, it says 768A. And if you look on the chart, if you can see that on the chart, it's just a phone, 768A for, for a train furnace, and this is a train furnace, it's 11 to 18 ohms. So this thing's well within specs. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put that back in, and then uh, I'm going to test the flame rod. Okay, the next thing we're gonna deal with on this is a flame rod, it's right there, where this connector goes in. Now, the first thing I wanna do with this flame rod is I wanna check the micro amps. This is DC micro amps, so you have to have a meter that'll do this. And I'm gonna hook this meter up and show you how it's hooked up, and then we'll fire this thing off. 
if you can see what I did here, the meter has to be in series with the sensing line from the Pro. Now I've got my black lead right there, and if you look close, you can see where I put the red lead. Now what I'm going to do is fire this thing off and see what I read. Now I should be reading on this thing anywhere from two to three and a half or four micro amps. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the furnace. The inducer's on. Hot surface igniter's coming on. And we should light off pretty quick. Okay, we're holding about two and a half microamps. Now that's fine. That's about where it should be. Uh, now that I've established what it is right now, whenever I service one of these things, I'm going to clean the flame rod. I don't care what I'm doing on the furnace that carries a flame rod. I don't care if I'm replacing a fan motor. I clean the flame rod. It's just how I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that flame rod out, and we'll take a look at it, and we'll clean it. Now I pulled the flame rod out and let's take a look at it. Now it looks like I'd expect it to look. It's not bad or anything, but it does have some buildup on it and I'm going to sand it off. Okay, a little bit of sandpaper. Now some guys say you can only use stainless steel or steel wool and on and on like that, but I don't really say that. Uh, I've cleaned these things for so long and I've never had one that I damaged by cleaning it But I also don't get rambunctious and just sand the living heck out of it. Just a little bit of sanding The trained flame rods don't seem to get corroded as bad as some But uh, I clean them anyway every time I service it Let's put it back in and we'll test it again to see what the flame sense is on this thing we were two and a half microamps before, and let's see what we are now. Okay, we have the same setup. I've got the uh, meter on it just like before, and let's see what difference. Remember, 2.5 was what we had before, and that was well within specs. Hot surface igniter's on. Okay, it's reading about the same, which is typical for train. But it's well within specs, so that's all we got to worry about. Okay, now we've done flame sense. In the next one, I'm going to go into safety shutdowns because you got to test safety shutdowns every time you do one of these furnaces. Got to be sure all the safeties work. That's it on that one.